Hello, everyone. I'm Aaron Camula. I'm Jeremy Manila. I'm Chao Jian Zem. I'm Jim Lee. And I hope you're all safe and healthy during this pandemic. Over the semester, the project we've been working on involved developing and building a model that can detect species and classify them specifically. So we can predict whether if there's a cat and we can predict a specific species. This presentation will go over why we made this network, how we processed and collected the data used, the specifics of the neural network architecture and training procedures, and the successes and lessons learned associated with this project. So here is the agenda for today's presentation. To start, I will talk about the major problems that most CNN image detection architectures are experiencing. Afterwards, I will share a video demonstration of our project UI. As of now, image detection networks can only determine whether they can see a cat, dog, or flower. They cannot go any further than that, which can be troublesome if a person wants more information or is interested about the species. Therefore, we will build on top of YOLO v4's architecture to enhance species detection and classification of cats, dogs, flowers, and horses. Now, we'll demonstrate how our project works with the use of a video. The cats and dogs, cats, horses, and flowers datasets were sourced from Kegel.com, and species descriptions were collected from Wikipedia. Also, we gathered images from uh, other sources, but primarily used Kegel. Our model is separated into three parts. The first is object detection using YOLO v4. Second is feature detection using the AlexNet pre-trained features, and third is the final classification using a custom fully connected network. YOLO v4 detects objects in an image by creating random bounty boxes of different sizes and form factors inside the image frame. Then it runs each box through its own pre-trained convolutional model to do basic classification of the object. Next, the cropped image is passed into a pre-trained AlexNet model for feature identification then into a custom fully connected model. The weights of this custom model depend on what object was detected by the YOLO algorithm, as each object has pre-saved weights. The custom fully connected network consists of three fully connected layers with hidden layer sizes of 1024 and 64 using the ReLU activation function for each layer. The data processing pipeline contains three parts in this project. The pre-processing pipeline deals with cleaning up and labeling images from Kaggle.com. The publishing pipeline pushes everything to the server. The runtime processing pipeline converts the input image to eventual outputs. For pre-processing, we take images from Kaggle.com, which are not always properly named. We use a combination of Python and C-sharp scripts to organize those image files into a folder structure suitable for loading with PyTorch data loader. For species summary, we manually collect data from Wikipedia and put into a CSV file. Both results are then published into a GitHub release for later reuse. For publishing of our web app, we use Python to train our models then save the trained weights into Python pickle files. We use PowerShell to automate uploading those files into a GitHub release. Then use batch scripts to set up the web app on a Debian server. During the runtime, users upload images on a website, which then converts the image into a PNG file. It costs YOLO, which is a C++ program to pre-process the image and use Python to pass the pre-processed result and split the regions of the source image into smaller images. Then we validate those results in case any of the cats, dogs, flowers, or horses are identified. It will further process those images to identify species names. Finally, the website gathers those results and presents the output. Next, Jim will be discussing some quantitative results. Thank you, Chao Jian. 
So this is the table for quantitative results. We have perfect training accuracy, uh, and we have reasonably good validation accuracy, and in most cases, we have good testing results. This is our training curve for the horses data set. This is the training curve for the flowers data set. This is the training curve for the cats data set. Notice that we're not doing so well with the cats data set, as you can see from the validation curve, which is around 40%. The reason why this is so is because we did not have enough time to finish training. Therefore, our workaround is to use the results from the cats and dogs data set. And here is the training curve for the cats and dogs data set, which has better results. For quality of the results, these are descriptions that are posted on the website. I want you to notice that our model actually does better on the side-facing images than the front-facing images. You can see in this example that uh, Frisian horses are classified incorrectly. This horse is not Frisian, but it's classified as so, and it's a front-facing model. This horse is classified correctly as Akaltiki. Now, Jeremy, what's the conclusion? Our first takeaway is that object classification is challenging and much more difficult when classifying the species of the object. Secondly, getting an accuracy of 70% on a medium-sized model with only a few thousand samples is feasible. And lastly, for our next steps, we will want to regu regularize the data sets we have to improve model generalization and prevent overfitting. Thank you. And here are references and acknowledgements.